Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm gonna to do a review on the Ninja Espresso and Coffee Barista System Coffee Maker. So this Ninja Coffee Maker will do espresso on the right hand side using the Nespresso Original Line Pod, and it's a coffee maker on the left hand side. So the only pods it does are these Nespresso pods. This is called the Original Line. It does not do the Nespresso Vertio Line, and it does not do K-Cups. It doesn't do either one of these. It only does Nespresso Original Line Pods. And these pods will usually say on the back what you run through them. Like this is a Lungo, 110 milliliters. Espresso is 40 milliliters. So here I've got one. This is an espresso shot, and this is a Lungo shot, like a double shot. Now the pods are exactly the same. It's just how much coffee is inside the pod. So again, this is the espresso shot, and this is the Lungo shot. So it's going to have more coffee in there that you can run more hot water through. So this coffee maker looks really nice. Again, here's where you're gonna put the Nespresso pod. And then when you wanna do Nespresso, you're gonna press this button and we can do over ice, Espresso, which is a single shot, or a Lungo. Over here, we've got the coffee maker side. So we lift this up. Here's our brew head. It does take a number four cone filter. This is the brew basket. We close the brew head. We come over here, we can do a coffee. This is the coffee maker side. If we want to do a classic brew, a rich brew, or an over ice brew. And then over here on the side, we do have a scoop that help, helps us measure how much coffee for the coffee maker side. And we've got this milk frother. So I really like this milk frother. Anytime you press this button, it's going to spin that little whisk down there. As soon as you let go, it stops. But it's very easy to clean. Just rotate it and we can take this over to the sink, clean that all up, and then put it back on. Now you do have to heat your milk up in the microwave and then froth it with this. So around the back, it does have a water reservoir. I like that it's got a nice handle for taking it on and off, very easy. And then here's what it looks like up top. This is a very stylish coffee maker and it's very laid out well. It's very intuitive as far as what you need to press in order to get it to start brewing. Okay, so Miss Beyond is ready for her treat. Okay, so let's talk about the espresso side. This is a little drip tray. It comes apart, it's very nice. And it's got little, you can set this on little, you can make it go up higher or down low. That's really nice when you wanna do like an espresso. And you got like a little cup, you can put it like right there. Now this also serves as when, the pot, when you're done with the pods and you open that up, they go back in this area right here. Now pull on this. This is where the used pods go. Now, an important thing to notice is the pods are gonna go in this area but you'll notice there's a hole down there that you will get some liquid down in here. And so it is a good idea to every once in a while empty that liquid in there. And this just slides in there. So it does come with this. This is for the clean, this is called the cleaning platform for the espresso side. So when you're, when you have to clean the espresso side, you're going to take the drip tray out, put this platform right here. And that's so you can put the carafe here and brew the water right into the carafe. The, and that way it speeds up the cleaning process. So, this is not used during normal operation, just for cleaning. Now over here on the, this is a 12 pot, 12 cup carafe. Um, the glass is very nice. It seems very well made up here at the top. We rotate it this way to get it out and start over there again and then rotate it till it snaps. The arrow will be lined up. It pours real nice. This does have a warming plate. We can turn the warming plate on and off. It does automatically come on after the coffee maker makes coffee and it will shut off automatically. We can adjust that time. But if you come up here and the coffee's been sitting for a while and it, say it's turned off on you, you can't come up here and hit that and turn it on manually without starting a brew. That's a very nice feature. We've got this little uh, platform comes down so that we can put a coffee mug right here because we can brew small ounces. We can brew an eight ounce coffee using the coffee maker side right into a coffee mug or into a travel mug. So on the coffee maker side, again, very, very well laid out. When you want to do espresso, press that button. When you want to do coffee, you press that button. When you, it has a power button also, but when you first turn it on, both of them will be flashing. That's to let you know, hey, which one do you want to do? This, this rotates. This is going to select our side. So we're on coffee maker. We're on classic brew. We can do rich brew. We can do over ice. Let's go back to classic. Rotate this. This is how big um, it's going to brew again. So if you've got a travel mug that holds 18 ounces, you can brew right, that in, right into a travel mug. But a full craft is 55 ounces. That's 12 cups. When you want to brew the full pot of coffee, 
you'll put it on 55 ounces. When you're ready to start the brew, you simply just press that button right there in the middle, that starts the brew. Over here on the espresso side, you're gonna press this button again. We got espresso, lungo, and over ice. Okay, so the manual talks about when we brew an espresso, that's 40 milliliters. When we do a lungo, it's 110 milliliters, and the over ice is 30 milliliters. Now, I'm glad these correspond with what the packages tell us. So this is an espresso, and it wants 40 milliliters run through there. This is a lungo, and it wants 110 milliliters run through it. So that does coincide with what the buttons are here. So the over ice is especially designed to brew straight over ice and stand up to a milk-based beverage. And it's only 30 milliliters, so it's less than the espresso. The theory is the, the ice is gonna melt and kind of dilute that a little bit. Okay, so let's brew a lungo on the espresso side. This is a really nice handle, lift it up. It's all made out of metal. When you put your pot in here, it's gonna go one way only, like that, and then it's gonna pierce the front and the back when you close that. Here's a used pod. You can see that it's piercing the front and the back when you close that handle. Now you're simply going, this is a Lungo pod that I put in there. You're gonna press this button until it says Lungo and now it's start brew. It's gonna say pre, that means it's preheating the water first. That preheating only took about 10 seconds and then it starts brewing it. And it comes out really hot. This is a really nice machine. So we're, 168, it's gonna ramp up to almost 192 really quick. It smells really good, there's 180. Yeah, it smells really good. There's 192. And, and then it's gonna beep, it's gonna wait a little bit and then beep at us and tell us that it's done. So there's our espresso, like I call that like a double shot. It ends up really hot. That's about a 178. That's a very hot. That's a very rich. Um, I can't drink it like that. I have to make a cappuccino or a latte to mix with that. Now when you're done, you're simply gonna lift this handle. That pod will drop down into that storage area that I showed you. Okay, so now let's brew just an espresso, like a single shot. There's where it goes in. When we close it, very simple to close. Press this, espresso, start. This is a very fast espresso machine using these Nespresso pods. It's like we're starting out around, hard to ramp up really, I did see about 180, 182 but it's just such a short shot that it doesn't have time to ramp up really high. We end up with 158 degree espresso shot. So I'm not a taste test, taste test expert by any means, but these do taste really good when you mix them with milk, like I make a latte or a cappuccino. And that's what's nice about having that milk frother on the side. I'm gonna get some milk, heat it up in the microwave, and then we can dump in the milk after we froth it with the frother. Okay, so let's heat up some milk, about 30 to 40 seconds. It doesn't take much because when we froth it, it's really gonna rise up. Okay, so it's been 30 seconds and the milk is already at 115, that's just right. Okay, so here's the funnest part with the built-in milk frother. I rotate it out, I put my milk in, I'm gonna press the button. You want it just below the top surface of the milk and you will have to kind of raise it up. As the milk gets higher in the cup, you just have to kind of raise it up. It helps if you tilt the cup a little bit sometimes. You don't want to, you don't need to be moving it around a bunch, but it's really gonna expand and make that foam on top a lot. Okay, so I frothed the milk. Let's go ahead and dump our single shot in. That milk frother works really well. You can see how much foam it created on the top. There's the hot milk and the espresso shot milk mixed in right now. So if you add, add yourself some syrup, some whipped cream, that makes a really nice cappuccino or latte. Over here, I really like the milk frother, easy to clean up. You're gonna take this over to the sink, you can rinse it off, and you can put that in the dishwasher. So again, on the espresso side, the possibilities are endless. You can make so many different types of drinks with that. You've got the basics here. You've got, you're able to make the espresso shot, like a single or a double, and you've got the milk frother. 
Okay, so let's jump over to the coffee maker side. Lift this up. This can be just a little tricky. Again, here's the brew basket. We need to put a filter in there. It does not come with a reusable filter, but you, you have to buy the specific reusable filter from Ninja just for this coffee maker. Otherwise, you got to use a number four paper filter. You cannot use both at the same time. It's either or. So we're going to be using a number four cone filter. So the first thing they want you to do is on these cone filters, they want you to fold. There's that seam there and this bottom seam. They want you to fold those over and then open it up. And then you're going to kind of, I like to kind of like put my hand in there to make it form against the walls there. That's, and then we're going to put our coffee right in there. So this is where this scoop comes in handy. So you see the full carafe. If we want to do a full carafe, we're going to put four to seven of these scoops in there. And if we want smaller ones, it's two to three on the smaller side. Now in the manual, it talks about the coffee measurement chart. If you do a small cup, it's two to three of the small scoops, but they also give you the tablespoon equivalent. So if you do lose this or can't find it, you are able to put just tablespoons in. So basically the small scoop is a tablespoon and the big scoop is two tablespoons. So I'm gonna do a full carafe. We do four to seven big scoops or eight to 14 tablespoons. I like to do one tablespoon per cup on brewing, so I'm gonna put 12 tablespoons in. Okay, so since I've been using it, the water was down a little bit. Make sure, if you're doing a full pot, make sure it's filled all the way to the top. So I got the filter basket in the filter. Again, you just put, put the coffee right there. And I put six of these large tablespoons or these large scoops in. That's equivalent to 12 tablespoons. And again, it, it takes medium ground coffee for a normal drip coffee maker. Okay, come up here, close the lid. It will kind of snap down. And again, make sure this filter basket isn't kind of over. Make sure it's down in this little detent. Snap it down. Okay, so since we want to do the coffee maker side, let's hit this coffee bean. I'm going to do a full pot again. I could have put accordingly scoops in there for a, I could have brewed an eight ounce coffee. So say I just wanted eight ounce. I could have brewed that right into an eight ounce by turning this lever, but I want the full carafe and I'm gonna do a classic brew. Now, if you do a rich brew, it takes a little bit longer and you don't get the full 12 cups in and you'll notice that the ounces goes down. That's as high as it can go. So when you do a rich, 47 ounces is the most you can get. Over ice is 50 ice, 55 ounces, but they, they're expecting the craft to be full of ice. When you do over ice on the craft side, it's not gonna turn the warming plate on. You want the pot for accordingly to how much ever you're gonna brew, but if you're doing a full pot, they want the full pot full of ice, and it'll brew the proper amount in to give you a, a full pot of iced coffee. But let's just go to classic, and again, when you're ready, just hit the start button. Make sure this is the drip stop is open. If the drip stop is closed, it's gonna beep at you and that's gonna flash at you. So put the drip stop to open and hit the brew button. Now the little red light above the warm came on, it turns the warming plate on and it starts the brew right away. But it's gonna brew for a little bit, then it's gonna pause. So it's been brewing for about 10 seconds. There's the coffee coming out. And there's this little status that's gonna go around till it's completely finished. The little bars are gonna light up progressing. So here's the pause. It's brewed for about 30 seconds. Water's still dripping out, but the pump has turned off. You can hear the pump has turned off. It's kind of pausing. It only pauses for just a little bit, and now it starts back up again. So we could see when it paused, it made a pretty big bloom on top of the coffee grounds up there. So that coffee smells delicious. It's a very quiet coffee maker. You do hear a pump running and towards the end it, you will get uh, some steam coming out and it gets a little bit louder, but during the brew, it's relatively quiet. So the temperature up top, 196, it's a little hard to get, to get it right there where it's coming out, but about 198, I have seen 200 up there. Again, that's very hot, be careful. So it's only been brewing about two minutes. Let's measure the coffee coming out the bottom. Uh, 192, 192, almost 193. And again, this red light came on to let me know that the warming plate is on. Now let's say I want to grab a cup of coffee. I don't want to wait till it's all the way done. That's what drip stops for. Move that to drip stop. It shuts the coffee maker, the, the pump off. I can grab a quick cup of coffee, but I got to put this back relatively quick. 
then it's going to turn the pump back on when I go to back to open. And that's exactly what it does. So let's take a sneak peek up top. Here's it. Oh, it's brewing good. So this coffee maker, the coffee that it's brewing smells really good. And same with the espresso side. When it was making the espresso, it smelled really good. Okay, so again, it's been about five, almost four and a half minutes. Again, one, it's, it's staying relatively consistent. I'm seeing about 198, 199, 200 up from that brew head up there. And that temperature up at the top was consistent from the time it started to the time it ends, of, around 200 degrees. Okay, so we're getting close to being done. Coffee coming out the bottom. Again, now we're up to about 194. Here's what it looks like. Again, there's the warming plate, the red light to show you that it's on. Now, when it's done brewing, that warming plate will stay on for two hours. That's the default, but I can adjust how long it stays on. After that two hours, it will shut the coffee maker off automatically. Okay, so right about the six minute mark, the pump has turned off, but I've still got water coming out the bottom of the filter basket. And this light is still pulsing to let me know that the brew is still going on. And then again, if you follow those bars, they're coming across. Eventually, they're going to come all the way over here, and it's going to beep at us and let us know that it's end. Okay, so it's pretty well still dripping just a little bit, seven minutes. This is a very fast coffee maker. To brew 12 cups of coffee in around seven minutes at a constant 200 degree temperature up at the top, that's a very nice feature. Now, at this point, if I wanted it to stop dripping, I could move this to drip stop. That would end the brew because we're almost done. But the timer that's built into it, it's just going to let it stop dripping on its own. And then it's going to say the word end. Okay, so it's beeping at us right at the eight minute mark. Move this to drip stop. I don't have to do that, but it is a good idea to move that to drip stop. Let's see how it pours. That's a very full carafe. We can see, wow. It pours really nice. That's very impressive. And that's a very hot cup of coffee. Be careful. I can tell just by how much steam's coming off. 176, almost 177 degree cup of coffee. So I've been drinking the coffee out of here. There's something about when it brews it at that 200 degree temperature, the coffee does taste really well. Now again, I have to add cream and sugar to mine, but it just really, it tastes, it tastes good and it smells good while it's brewing. So that light went to solid now. Now, if I wanted to, I could come over here. If I wanted to do an espresso, I could do the espresso. The warming plate is still going to stay on on this side. But say I want to brew uh, a single shot. Um, you know, if you want a really strong coffee, you could brew a single shot right into your cup of coffee. Okay, so let's see how it did at the top. Oh, yeah. It did not overflow the filter basket. That's a very good sign. And it looks like it did a good job brewing the coffee grounds. Cleanup is very simple. You simply are going to take this. You can go recycle those coffee grounds or throw them away. It's not going to drip on you as you take it over there. So around back, we still have a little bit of water, water in the reservoir. That's how it's supposed to be. It never wants to run dry. So it never brews the entire amount in the water reservoir. If you fill it up to the max line when you do a full pot, it leaves just a little bit so that it doesn't suck water or air into the water pump in there. Okay, so say you're all done with it. You can come up here and hit the power button. That will turn the warming plate off. So if you do hit the power button, the warming plate will turn off. But here's the nice thing about it. So say you did that on accident, you can turn it back on. You can hit that warming plate. So you gotta hit the class, you gotta hit this button first. But I can come over here and turn the warming plate back on. So say it shuts down automatically. You come, hey, there's a bunch of coffee left. I wanna warm it up. So you turn it on. I did have to put the drip stop over here to open, press the coffee button, and then hit the warming plate. And that little red light comes on to let you know that the warming plate is on. Okay, so the coffee maker is off. I've got, I turned the power off of it. This is how it looks when it's sitting on your countertop. The clock is like a really dim display. It looks really nice. But if you want to set the time on the clock, you got to turn it on and hit the coffee bean button. And then hit, the, hit this hour button so that it, it goes over to the time. And now I can adjust the time and then press this button in the middle, it goes to the minutes. When you're done, hit that and it's, it memorizes the time. And then when you turn it off, there's the time. Okay, so this does have delay brew. I can program this to, to brew you a full pot of coffee or a half a pot of coffee or brew into a travel mug 
whatever time you'd like. So turn it on. You got to press the coffee bean button. It does not let you program the, the espresso side. So the coffee bean button is lit. Hit the delay brew button one time. Now the time's going to change. This is the time you want it to come on in the morning. I want it to come on at 5. Press the button. 5.15 a.m. Make sure the a.m. is right. Hit the delay brew button. Now what size do you want to brew in the morning? This wasn't the last size that was selected, so you got to select what you want. I want a full pot. And to make sure you want the classic, rich, or over ice, I want a classic. Hit the delay button again. It's going to beep at you. And the delay light is lit. And make sure you've got your filter in, your water in, and your craft is empty. So when you go to bed, if you try to turn it off, it's going to beep at you. And that little delay light's going to... So don't turn it off. It's saying if the delay brew is lit. Now, let's say you want to sleep in in the morning. Come up here. Just hit that delay brew one time. It turns the delay light off above it. Now this coffee maker will not start in the morning. Once you've got your time set every day, then you come up here and hit, okay, yeah, that's what I want. The minutes, the ounces, and now it's set. Okay, so now let's turn the warming plate. Let's set that time. We can go from zero to four hours. Turn it on, hit the coffee bean side, press and hold this warm button. I'm gonna hold it. See how the display, it says two hours. That's the default. It's gonna go in 15 minute increments. So if you don't want the warming plate to ever come on, set it to zero. But if you want it to stay on, let's say an hour after you're done brewing, let's just press that. And it also has a temperature. We can do high, medium, and low. Medium is the default. So say you want the craft to be kept at a high temperature, press that. Now it's memorized. Now when you brew a pot of coffee, the warming plate will stay on for one hour at a high temperature. Okay, so the coffee maker also has a clean light. It's got a clean uh, light for the coffee maker side and the espresso side. So underneath the coffee bean, if the little clean light lights up orange, that's letting you know that it's time to descale the coffee maker. And there is a descaling procedure according to the manufacturer's instructions. And then when it's time to clean the espresso side, there's a clean light underneath this right here. So if we look at the manual, you'll see there's a clean light there and a clean light there. That's to let you know when it's time to clean. We also have a button here. This is to, to do the cleaning mode, to put the coffee maker into the cleaning mode to clean the coffee maker. So in the manual, there is also a high altitude calibration. So if you live at a high altitude, you do need to do a calibration brew so that the coffee maker knows it's at a high altitude. If you don't, and you live at say like Denver, you could get a bunch of steam instead of making a lot of coffee. Okay, so let's pull this open just to see how it did. We've got our pods in here. Again, this comes off. This part does lift off, but there is a hole underneath here, so it could leak on you. There's our pod. And again, we did get just a little bit of water in there, not a whole lot. Slide this in, and then slide that in. The carafe is dishwasher safe. The, the brew basket up here at the top is dishwasher safe. This is a very nice coffee maker. I'm very impressed with it. The coffee tastes really good. The cappuccinos, the lattes taste really good. I'm super impressed with this coffee maker. I'll be doing several reviews on it. I will show you how to put it into descale mode on the carafe side, and I will show you how to put it in descale mode on the espresso side. Now they, Ninja, I just saw on the box lid, they've got their own uh, descaling solution. I'm gonna buy that descaling solution and I'm gonna be using it to descale this coffee maker. Again, this, this coffee maker blew me away. I absolutely had no idea. They're maintaining 200 degree temperature up at the top. The espresso side correlates with how much, you know, exactly what they should be brewing through these, these pods. You'd be surprised. Some coffee makers don't do that. They brew a different amount. Um, it looks really nice, you know, and being able to brew into a travel mug, um, do iced coffee, that's really special. And you could take a cup of coffee and say you want another caffeine kick in it. You could brew a single shot right into your cup of coffee with using an espresso pod, so... And using that original line espresso pod, there are all kinds of flavors out there. And you can get all kinds with this. I will be doing comparison videos with the Ninja Dual Brew Pro. But Ninja has really hit a home run with this. I, I'm just, I cannot say how impressed I am with this. And there, there does seem to be a demand for these Nespresso original line coffee pods. And I think they've done it right. It's quick, it's fast, it's hot. It's the correct amount. 
Um, you know, the milk frother, I've gotten used to heating up my milk. I've gotten used to that. You know, this doesn't heat the milk up, but you can heat it up, but the frother works really well. Again, I, I don't know the longevity of it, but I've had good luck with Ninja products. I just recently called the Ninja hotline for a steam mop, and it was very impressive. I got a hold of customer service. The person sent me a link and a text. It turned my phone into a camera. They could see the uh, product that I had, and they were telling me, okay, hit this button, do this. That was very impressive. Now, the, the product didn't work, and they could see that it wasn't working. They sent me a new one. That whole process took less than 20 minutes. So calling customer service, Ninja, my, I have had one experience with it. It was outstanding. I really didn't know they had the technology now to where they can send you a text and it turns your camera. You got to click on the text and it turns your camera into like, like a video camera for them. They can see your product. It, it, the, the audio was really w good. Um, it just it worked very well. I was very impressed with Ninja's a customer service. That's going to, when they have good customer service like that, that's going to make me want to buy their products because I think they're going to stand behind them if something goes wrong with it. And if you are having problems, say that you're, you're, you're just not pressing the right switch. You're like, oh, the coffee maker's broke. Well, you're not pressing the right switch. They're going to be able to help you through that, I would think, by seeing what you're doing instead of just talking you through and saying, oh, okay, press this button. Is the light on? Yeah, yeah, maybe. But when they can see the actual product, that was awesome. So again, I will put a link to this in the show description notes. I am an Amazon affiliate. If you click on the links, the, I do get a little bit of money from the clicks, but the products won't cost you anymore. So I really appreciate everybody's support. Again, I'm doing this full time now. A viewer told me about this coffee maker in, com in a comments on another video. I was super excited. I had no idea. This one just kind of snuck out there. Um, so I was able to be one of the first ones to get it. Now they are starting to promote it. I've, I've been seeing some emails on it. I've saw it on some Facebook ads now. So it's really starting to show up out there. This is going to be a, an extremely nice coffee maker. This serves a really good purpose for an espresso pods and a, and a full pot of coffee and being able to brew into a travel mug. So again, if you could, please like and subscribe and thanks so much for supporting.